Hey friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm so glad you're here. Each week on this show, I invite a girlfriend to join me and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. Guys, you're listening to episode number 175, and my guest is Elisa Keaton. Elisa runs Revelation Wellness, and her joy and love for life and the Lord is contagious. You're going to feel that joy and love today as you listen. Today, we dive into so many big and deep topics. No matter where you are in your life stage or your walk with the Lord, you're going to find something today that will minister to your heart, I promise. I want to thank one of today's sponsors, and that is iFit. You know what, guys? Here's the deal. Enough with the food trends and health fads. If you want to be sure that you're getting all the nutrients your body needs, opt for iFit Nourish, a customized protein drink that's made for you and only you. Unlike other nutritional shakes, iFit Nourish allows you to personalize your mix. I did this. It's a lot of fun to go online and do it while delivering the highest quality of fruits, veggies, and proteins, plus 25 essential vitamins and minerals. There's no artificial flavors, no added colors, no preservatives, no fillers ever. Go to ifitnourish.com slash Jamie for a free 14 serving bag of Nourish Mix and a shaker bottle. That's ifitnourish.com slash Jamie to create your personalized formula today. Friends, if you don't know, my very first book, If You Only Knew, is 20 days away from releasing. I would love it if you would take the time and the chance on me to pre-order the book. Pre-ordering a book is a great way to let bookstores know that this book matters and that people want to buy it. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you to those that have pre-ordered. If you still want to pre-order, head on over to Amazon and get your book, If You Only Knew. Also, you guys, we're hitting the road with a book tour. This is something that I am so excited about because I get to see you. I get to see you. I get to hug your neck. I get to hear your stories. I get to look you in the eyes when we chat. I love meeting listeners, and this is a super fun way for me to do that. So tickets go on sale this week, you guys. If you are subscribed to our newsletter, you're going to get the links tomorrow in an email. So you get them first. You get them before anybody. Then on Friday, they go on sale to the masses. Bring your girlfriends because this is going to be some fun nights. Here are some of the cities we're going to. We're heading to Dallas, Atlanta, my hometown of Austin, Seattle, Northwest Arkansas, San Antonio, and Nashville. It's going to be such a fun, fun book tour. If you're close to these cities, you've got to come out and see us. So if you want tickets, check out my webpage, jamieivy.com, and there'll be a place there to tell you how to get tickets. All right, friends, here is my conversation with Elisa. Elisa, welcome to the happy hour. Jamie. I'm so excited to be here. Okay, so I've seen you around the world. Really? Well, the internet. I was you, know, say. you know how you know how life is. Yeah, you know, okay. you can see people and follow people. Um, and I've been so intrigued with everything that you're doing mm. that I am so excited to hear more. Thanks. You. So, yeah. so, so excited. So first of all, you released the book. Yes. The Wellness Revelation. When did it release? It released on August 8th. Of this last year. Yeah, so it came out, right? It came out, it was really kind of Tyndale, my publisher. They've been amazing. They they wanted it to come out in like the middle of summer. And I was like, uh, I don't think that's really a great time. It will get ignored. Uh-huh. I go, but there's kind of a few new New Year's in the in the wellness world. And that's at the beginning of the year, which we're in right, right now. now. Yeah. yeah, that's the big one. That's uh-huh. the big show. Yes. But then there's the new New Year, which happens about March or April. It gets real. Like, okay. Who's what are we, still here? Yeah, who's yeah. still here? And then the summer's coming. And then it gets quiet in the summer because people are like, it is what it is, right? <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. It yep. is what it is. We're throwing our hands in the totally. air. Totally. Yeah. But then out coming off of summer, I not actually think that feels like a really good time because you're, you're, the holidays are coming. You kind of want to be preemptive. You're not doing it for the bikini body. You just kind of want to feel yeah. well. So it came out around that time. And it's been great. Yeah. So have you had any pushback? Um, no, I haven't. I, I mean, I've heard wonderful things. Wonderful. I think of anything, probably. I, I mean, from that particular chapter that you no, were worried about. No. And actually, I'm more surprised um, more people don't ask about it in a way. And I think, and that's okay. Like, I'm not trying to start a rebellion or anything. Um, but I think it weighs on us. I think it's a this, this pressure we feel and what do we do with it? How do we, as people and women who want to pursue God and my good friend, Jess Conley and her book, you know, Dan, Dan Stan Run and Holiness, this is pursuit Amazing. of holiness, uh-huh. Uh-huh. not very popular, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think people don't know what to do. There's kind of a hush in a way. Yeah. And I'm just waiting on the Lord. I think the Lord knows what he's doing mm-hmm. there. And if, and when anyone wants to talk about that, and I'm happy to talk about it anytime. Yeah. 
I love that. Hmm. So does this happen to have anything to do with what you told me about that you did three years ago? Having my breast implants uh-huh. removed. Yeah. Do you talk about that in the book? I, I do. Okay. Yeah, I do talk about that in the book. And I have a whole series on my blog about that. Of the kind, of, I tell the whole story of what that was like. And I have received, I will say, I do get emails from people that were thinking about it or have gotten theirs out mm-hmm. because they read that. What tell, Take me back though. Okay. Okay. So what made you think, I want to remove <laughs> breast implants? Well, first we have to go back to what made me put them in. Yeah. So I'm a fitness professional, mm-hmm. right? Like I love fitness. It's not, it doesn't define me, but I just enjoy it. I enjoy the expression of it. I, something happens when I move my body. And so I did that a many, many years without knowing Christ. And I was super empty. Like I didn't, I had the body, had the money, had everything on the outside looked really good. But inside it was so sad and so lonely. And and I think the biggest lie, it's always good to know what your lie is that you battle. And for me, it was, you're not chosen, you're not worth it, and you're alone. This is as an unbeliever, but you're feeling these things. Yes, as an unbeliever, you're just battling that. So, okay, I'm going to prove my worth. I'll find someone to love me. I'll make a life that will have value, money, stability. And I kind of knew Jesus too. I would say I was born in a Christian home, but it was more religion. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was just Jesus in my back pocket. So he kind of invaded my fitness realm. He kind of got my attention there. But that was early on. And I still had this, I was walking with Christ too, probably a year, like fully walking with him in my faith as a fitness professional. And I always just felt unrest about my body. I I don't, I was born with a negative A cup, right? Right. Okay. Like, so it's Uh just, there's nothing there, folks. And I always, um, I got into fitness competing a little bit and there's just that comparison of of Mm. trying to get the perfect body. And so what's the harm, right? Like just get them put in and everyone was doing it in my field. I mean, it's just, it's common. Mm. And, and I just thought, why not? And I remember having, when I decided I was going to do it, I had a client that I was personal training who knew that I was kind of growing in my Christian faith about a year or so into it. And she, I remember her looking at me one day and just saying, Elisa, you don't have to do that. You're beautiful as you are. Like kind of that sober moment when someone looks you in the eye and goes, don't you see what I see? Mm -hmm. And I remember going, yeah, but kind of broken going, I, I hear you, but I I can't hear you. So I'm doing this. So I did it. Because did you feel like as a fitness professional and you're competing that this is going to help me or, I mean, it's going to enhance. It'll it'll, it'll, it'll enhance me. It'll make me look more the part. Mm -hmm. I'll have more of the body. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, I did. I really did. It yeah. was figure shaped perfect. Um, but I do remember waking up with them, with them. It's uh-huh. kind of weird. Like, well, there they are. There they are. And and kind of feeling like they were foreign for me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know they're not you, but you kind of go, okay, we're gonna make peace. <laughs> and you I think they just became you kind of enjoy the celebration. Hey, I fit in my clothes and hey, there's all this. And so you kind of focus on that. So I did that for many, many years. So then to get to the point where I wanted them out, there was one thing my surgeon said to me when I got them put in. And I was kind of weird. And I remember him saying, um, you know, I said, Do you have to like maintenance or anything yeah, yeah. like, uh-huh. you know, Fill like, them up like later. tires yeah. Yeah. deflate. But you do, don't you? <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Okay. And he said, yeah, it's, it's a good idea every 10 years or so to, to get them changed out. And so I'm thinking, okay. So it's as if the clock started and I felt like the Lord really did go. He, he loved me and he was like, and he wasn't, he didn't hold me back. He's not against our will, but I do feel like at that point he clicked the clock. Like, Okay, we got 10 years. We'll talk about this again in 10 years. I love you. I'm with you, baby girl. We can talk about this again in 10 years. And I went and I grew in ministry and everything in my whole life, you know, all that goodness of growing in God. And then it really wasn't about 10 years. It started weighing on me. And in 10 years, I had growth with Christ. In 10 years, I was understanding what this thing was for, the body, the bigger message besides let's just help women fit in their jeans, this wholeness message, this gospel integration of heart, soul, mind, and strength, and how the body is the fullest expression of our obedience. The body, without the body, nothing gets done. Nothing shows itself as salt and light on the earth. And so I go, oh, this is a bigger thing, God, than just helping people lose weight. So I think sometimes people don't know where to put me in this Mm -hmm. spectrum because I don't know. Can we just keep it about the squats, Elisa? (laughs) I'm like, okay, but oh, I really think God wants to heal us. 
heal and we all need healing. So that's what happened for 10 years. I was walking and being healed. Year 11, walking, being healed. Year 12. Year, so it was really 15 years okay. that I just grew so much in the Lord. I just thought, you know, these aren't me. They're not me. They were never me. Mm -hmm. I want me back. I want my original design. Elisa Michelle Amador uh -huh. at the time. I want her back. So I thought, and I thought, and I think the Lord, and he was saying, you know, it was an invitation. Again, you don't have to, but if you want to find out what's behind this, he always doesn't, like, I get excited about him because he just speaks to me in a way that's really um, courageous, pioneer, like, uh -huh. hey, like, want to go see what's around uh -huh. that corner? Yeah. Like, want to go see over yeah. there? And um, so that's how it felt for me when the draw to get it out, have him taken out. Um, I think I just felt joyfully rebellious of like, I'm getting me back, going back all the way back. Yeah. So I did it. And you haven't looked back. I haven't looked back, but I have to tell you, <laughs> it's all, you can read it on my blog. You can go to lisakeaton.com and read the whole breast removal story. If this in intrigues any of you, but I mean, I, there was pushback along the way. Um, the surgeon, I had to go to a few certain no, surgeons aren't big on this, by the way, oh. nobody plastic surgeons. Okay, well, I have a dumb question. Yeah. So the skin, mm had stretched mm. and then you took it mm. out mm. what do you do then you weep for a bit let me just say something so women that are freak out about that god has designed the body it is a glorious thing are you gonna tell me that your skin went back it resets now it's not a hundred percent for sure i mean we if anyone's nursed a baby they know right, yeah right mm -hmm. but but it does have an elasticity to it. I mean, all I'm saying is when they were first out, I was concave. Mm. I mean, I wish I could show, yeah. I'm happy, I'll show you the pictures, but- <laughs> We won't put I, it on the I, internet. Yeah, I won't yeah. put them on the internet, <laughs> but it, it's, and you don't really find them because I kept trying to find pictures on the internet of like post right uh -huh. after surgery. And it looks really ugly. It really does. It looks like a battle. You and I, But I remember opening up my wounds and looking, I'm going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> And looking at the mirror and um, just, I felt just the pleasure of the Lord of the battle. Like you have battled so well. I'm so proud of you. And this is going to be okay. Because I did, it felt like, what did I do to myself? Like, what did I do? Um, and the fear of how will my husband be attracted to me? You know, we had to work through all that. I have an amazing husband. So, you know, and I know maybe some husbands wouldn't be supportive of that. So, that's your, your walk with the Lord. And that's why I would never say every woman has to do this, but if you're feeling the call, just open the next mm -hmm. door, have the next conversation, trust the next yes. And the next no. Yeah. And I love to just listen to your story for the first time here and hearing the reasoning that you felt you needed, um, to have your breast implants. That reason was gone. Totally gone. Because you had been fulfilled by Jesus. I had been healed. And so I think that that is a really, really great important part of your story is that God is like it's like full circle he's saying I actually am what you've always been looking for amen yeah yeah and it didn't fulfill it no you oh, know gosh and that's what I feel like that does feel like the battle for which I was born is freedom because the thing you know idols are um idols anything we worship besides God will will own us right mm -hmm. it's bondage it's captivity it's what keeps us from the full freedom abundant and joyful life and I love Tim Keller says, I say this all the time. He says that idols, you know, you have an idol because they pers they consume you as you pursue them. They disappoint you when you get them and they devastate you when you lose them. And that for me, the body, especially in our society, the elevation of what we see, what looks good, that's all fleeting. We know that biblically mm -hmm. is all fleeting. So careful to us. And we have to check our eyes. I love Instagram. I love social media. And I know the Lord loves it too. But when it begins to take me captive, when it owns me, I don't have abundant and joy, wellness in me. It's That's, time to take yeah. a break. It's yeah. time. I've, I have made it my idol. Mm -hmm. Eyes off of it. Eyes on Jesus. Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so this is January and you even said it. January is when everyone's getting back. Mm -hmm. Wellness, my body, 
Mm-hmm. I mean, even my husband and I, I mean, yeah. we're like eating differently this month because the holidays just nearly killed us because we just <laughs> seriously we consumed anything that anyone put in front of us. I, I was saying to someone yesterday as I had a headache because I because I'm like, I'm off the pipe. In other words, the sugar, like the the crack. The co- I had a the, headache last night too. Yes. I it's think it's you're just off- because, and sh- you know, sugar is not a big thing for me. Like mm-hmm. one of my kids, I swear he dreams of sugar. <laughs> for me, it's carbs and mm-hmm. cheese and mm-hmm. savory yeah. But I literally, we even said, and and we have a, I would say a mostly healthy view of, you know, we eat pretty yeah. healthy at our yeah. house. Uh, but we said, okay, the month of January, like we're pulling back a little bit because our body, we're feeling it, you yeah. know? Yeah. You, t- this is your life. Yeah. Wellness. Yeah. But you just said something and what's your tagline? I said it. I said it in last week's show. It's My, under your email. Love God, get healthy, be whole, love others. I love it Yay! so much. I love that too. Like I, And then I just wrote down, you said heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mm-hmm. And I think I can speak for myself, but I think a lot of women, we just stick with one of them. We just find mm-hmm. one. <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. I was talking to another person and I said, we find one because we have time for one. Yeah, that's a good point. You know? Yeah. So your ministry mm-hmm. is the whole body. The whole body. Like- from the inmost place. Let's work from the inside out, which it's so cliche for the wellness world to say that because you go to a yoga class, go anywhere else. We're going to talk about the God, you know, the thing within you. And we go, yes, let's feed. This is so, God is the first spiritual guru ever. Mm-hmm. Jesus is mm-hmm. like, that's who he was. Mm-hmm. He spoke it. Now yeah. it's just other yeah. truths are yeah. speaking it. But tell me, tell me this, when you're looking at a woman, mm-hmm. And you said your 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 motto is freedom. Yeah. You totally. want freedom in all areas. Yes. We can get so caught up though with our bodies. And mm-hmm. we've just been talking about this. I mean, mm-hmm. it is a struggle. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be 40 this year, Lisa. Oh, and I know welcome to I the know. 40s. I was like, I know you're already there and you look amazing. And yeah. I just I know you're parenting teenagers like I am <laughs> yes. and all the things about oh, 40. Yes. All the things 40 brings. And I'm excited and I love it. Mm-hmm. But my body's changing mm-hmm. and things are Things yeah. are sticking more yeah. and harder, oh, you know, yeah. all kinds of oh, things. Yeah. But when you're talking with women, it is so hard in the world that we live in to focus on our bodies for the wrong reason, to look like Instagram yeah. says we should look yeah. or to look like the movies yeah. say we should look yeah. or to, I mean, just anything. I mean, I just yeah. had a conversation with girlfriends yesterday and every single one of us, besides one at the table, there were five of us, every single one of them, like, I've got to lose weight. Okay. I'm just, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so this is just our, our society. Mm. How do you help women get their brains over the whole picture? Mm. Mm. Well, the first thing we do is that it's actually something we've created and it's on our website now. It's called a, a detox, a seven day detox. And we, we reframe, we have to reframe. We have to detox and renew our mind, right? Because uh-huh. it's Romans 12, so says, do not yeah. conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind where the man thinks. So he goes. So if my mind is constantly thinking of my fat, my mm-hmm. belly fat, my shake, whatever that is, I'm all about that. I'm in the wrong place. So I need to pull back and reframe what am I focusing on? What is the thing that matters most to me? What are the desires of my heart? What's the real dream inside of me? I just have to get clear and clean. We feel a stress and anxiety that comes from the wrong, pl- it's coming from a, it's coming. It, I mean, stress and anxiety isn't of the Lord, period. And if it's a fear motive too, I think that's something else women need to check in with. Like, do they feel like if they don't lose the 10 pounds, why? Because- Yeah, fear of what? Fear of what? Fear my husband won't uh-huh. find me attractive. Fear of I'm not going to be as fit as my friend. Right. FOMO, fear mm-hmm. of, right? It's all fear. And, I, and honestly, it breaks down to that. So when I'm get, talking that's with someone, your motive is either love or fear. So a race, you got to chase down all the hounds of hell that are barking fear, 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 guilt, shame, shame, shame. Those don't come from the kingdom, huh. but look for the gold. Look for what's my motive. What's my, what's a good lasting eternal motive, a good one for me. Because I think the Lord is for how you. How do we change our mind? Because when you said that fear, I've never thought about that. So I'm sitting over here going, well, what am I afraid of? That, yeah. that what is my motivation? Yeah. And it well, could be fear. Totally. Fear. Come on, I'm 46. Yeah. I am not the girl I was at 21, 19. I mean, I see my body changing. I feel like I said at 40 for me felt like I woke up and someone took all my blood and replaced it with glue. Like <laughs> I was <laughs> so stiff and like things uh-huh. don't move as yeah. fast. Lubrication is not uh-huh. there. Yeah. Like it's uh, it's harder. It's different. But you know what? I'm gonna celebrate this thing. Dash Garn. Like I'm like someone has to show 
what it looks like to be well at 46. I love it. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it at 56. I'm going to do it at 66. 86, 96. Watch me Instagram for the rest of my life. I will be the Petri dish of what it looks like to go, it's well with my soul. And to be well, all of it. All areas. That's what. I will have a joy. I will have a joy. If I don't have a joy about my life, what's the point? Mm Mm-hmm. What's the point? I've, I've, there's an idol. Somewhere there's an idol if I don't have the joy. Somewhere I'm putting my hope in fear or I'm putting my faith in fear. So that's the detox, the seven day. Yeah, you're just a detox. That so out. It's just reframing. Like, let's look at what what are you inhaling? What airs are you, what air is you breathing? And, and a lot of it too is um, there's also, you know, a physiology to it. We need, it sounds weird <laughs> as a fitness girl who'd be like, we got to get them on the treadmill. We got to uh-huh. go, go, go. Actually, we need to pull back and get quiet. It's so weird. It's so, it's so powerful though, but we have to like the stress be, uh, and now I'm talking from a mind perspective mm-hmm. and neuroscience because our mind and our body work together. That's the wellness collection, mind and body and soul and spirit. But when the mind, we have some control over it and our neurologically, we have been set up for stress and anxiety our whole life. That's why I really feel called, Jamie. My call is not just to get the, you know, the church to lose a hundred pounds a person or whatever. Mm -hmm. It really isn't about that. I see a church that is beautiful, wonderful, full of potential and unhealthy, not because they weigh a hundred, whatever pounds Mm -hmm. overweight, unhealthy in the fact that they're stuck. Mm. they're, they're stuck. They, they, they have a dream or they have a desire and one or two things happen. They either take that thing and throttle it to death and make it their idol. That's religion. Mm -hmm. And they lose the joy of it. They forget all about Jesus or they face something that comes against them and they give up immediately and pull back. Mm -hmm. Right. It's obsessing or neglecting. That's two patterns is pride or unbelief An unhealthy church will fall into those categories of pride or unbelief. And I feel like as the church can get healthy, not because of, you know, let the, let the size of your genes or whatever kind of be a catalyst for, okay, what's God speaking to me about? But this all goes back to some youth in us, some places in us where we're wounded and where we're hurt. Mm-hmm. Those, right? That's, yeah. he's always interested in that story. Yeah. Not in what can I do for him today? Mm-hmm. It's more about what has he done in me? How mm-hmm. have I relationship grown in knowledge of who he is? Because he knows me. Mm-hmm. He knows my hurt. He knows my stress. He knows my anxiety. And the truth is we eat or abuse food because we're not connected to mm-hmm. ourselves. That goes back to the silence place. So back to like a motive, when you have a thought of like, you want to lose weight or whatever it is and something triggers it. Let's say you put on a pair of jeans and they don't fit. It's happened to all of us, right? Hello, <laughs> right. January. Or, uh, are you sure somebody washed I them? I think the dryer's gotten to my pants yes, again. There yeah, there it is. <laughs> Who dried my jeans? All right, so you put those on and it literally right away, it'll send a message to your brain. Like you get a message mm-hmm. of whatever that message is. It will incite your amygdala, which is in the middle of your brain. It's an almond shaped little Mm -hmm. place. And it's a fight or flight section of your brain. You choose what to do. It's from that amygdala space, especially if it's connected to anything in your youth. Mm. You are fat. Somebody called you fat. Your husband said you're fat or someone on television or what is it's created that story that's in you because our bodies hold the story. So when the amygdala gets triggered, fight or flight, then we tend to run our life at a, what we call the limbic part of the brain. It's the reptile part of the brain, the stem part of the brain, which is, okay, count calories, control. I'm going to do that. Like it's all, it's all brute strength. Mm-hmm. When we're created for glorious inner strength, which is found up in the prefrontal mm-hmm. medial cortex, that's the CEO of the body. We don't CEO ourselves enough. So to the woman who's sitting there going, I'm fat, I can't stand my thighs mm-hmm. are touching, da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Like they need a CEO before they start making a decision on anything, you have to like, okay, settle down. Let's invite the truth in. Mm -hmm. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Righteousness is the CEO Mm -hmm. center of the brain. Mm -hmm. Then all these things will be given to you. You might not get the drop of four sizes in your jeans, Mm -hmm. but you will get you, Mm. the size you're supposed to be, living the life you're supposed to live. Because ladies, especially women of the church, there needs to be diversity. Mm -hmm. If there's not someone walking on the beach as a size 10 and being free in their body because that's their genetic code, Mm -hmm. we are ripping off the world. Mm. 
We are the God colors of the world. There is supposed to be a variety of us. So that's why I'm like, if the church was healthy, we would, we would exude this glorious inner strength of beauty and we would shame this media culture that tells us that we should have shame. Hey guys, I know you're loving the show. I wanna take a second real quick to thank our sponsors. The first one is RX Bar. You guys know I have four kids. Do you know what four kids always want? Snacks, snacks, I want a snack, I want a snack. And you know what? Here's the deal. As parents, we expect the same high quality, clean label nutrition for our kids as we do for ourselves, right? But you know what? All too often, we have to compromise when it comes to snacks. But thankfully, now there's RX Bar Kids. It's a clean label snack bar made with high quality, real ingredients designed specifically for kids. With egg whites, fruit, and nuts as the base, RX Bar Kids contain seven grams of protein and have absolutely no added sugar, gluten, soy, dairy, or bad stuff. You guys, that's why I love this because my daughter's dairy-free and we try not to do a lot of added sugar. My mom is gluten-free. So these bars are something that I know I can let my kids grab frequently as much as they want and I know that they're getting good stuff. They've got three flavors, chocolate chip, my personal favorite, apple cinnamon raisin, and berry blast. My kids like those. They are perfect for anytime kids want something tasty and feeling like breakfast on the go or as an after school snack. These bars are super easy for me to throw in my kids' lunch boxes to give them after school, to put in our bag for baseball practice. They work everywhere. Right now you can find them at Target stores or guys, here you go. Listen up for 25% off your first order. That's huge. Visit rxbar.com slash happy hour and enter promo code happy hour at checkout. They're going to show up at your house just when you need them. That's rxbar.com slash happy hour. Promo code happy hour for 25% off your first order. You and your kids will be happy about this one, guys. Guys, also, I want to thank iFit. You know, the holidays are done. We indulged. We did it. Now we're into January. And sometimes it's going to be harder for us to see that we can get all of our nutrients in. And that's why there's iFit Nourish. It's a customized protein drink that's jam-packed with all of the essential nutrients that you need. You see, iFit Nourish is unlike any other nutritional shake because it allows you to personalize your mix while delivering the highest quality of fruits, veggies, and protein, plus 25 essential vitamins and minerals. And since iFit Nourish is passionate and picky about their ingredients, there's no artificial flavors, no added colors, no preservatives, and no fillers ever. iFit Nourish focuses on the basics of human nutrition so that every single ingredient in your formula is included for a reason and backed with extensive research. And don't worry, you guys, all their flavors have been approved by a panel of taste judges and are completely delicious. So if you're ready to simplify your life, just go to ifitnourish.com slash Jamie for a free 14 serving bag of iFit Nourish Mix and a shaker bottle. It's hassle free, you guys, and 100% convenient. That's ifitnourish.com slash Jamie to create your unique mix today. All right, you guys, back to my conversation with Elisa. And I love your ministry because I think for women, and you probably have seen this over the past 20 years, however long you've been doing this, is that body and health and image and all of those Mm -hmm. things, it is a trigger in our lives Mm -hmm. for so much more. Mm -hmm. And so you're taking, I already know women, this is a trigger and women struggle. And we're going to go a little bit deeper where I'm sure if someone comes to you for help, they're like, well, I don't really need you to look at my heart. I just need you to get me, help me get into my jeans. Uh (laughs) Well, they know at this point, I'm probably not the girl for Uh. them. I can't, I I can't do it anymore. Like I, I, it's, and, and I also want to say, I mean, some people that's just where they're at. They can work on that, but I'm, I'm called more to listen. I'm the daughter of a, a mom who right now has stage four ovarian cancer. I'm praying for the Lord to give us six more months, but she's was wounded, like incredibly wounded her whole life. She loves Jesus, but she never let Jesus love her. Mm. And I'm absolutely convinced that there's much of her sickness in her life right now just was part of never dealing with her pain. So it's almost like the Lord, and she has prayed me into this space. What my mom could not do, she at least passed something for me that now I, I feel that's my call. I'm called to the the men and the women who have been chronically stressed, abused, neglected, kicked up. They've been marginalized. Mm-hmm. They're the ones at the back of the pack. I'm going to be at the back. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll walk the whole way in. I don't need to run the, the line first. I don't, I've been there. There's nothing really there. It's kind of boring. I'll go back. I'm waiting for all of the people at the back to go. I'm, I'm disqualified. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. Let Jesus love you. And it, you know what? It burns. 
It burns to let Jesus love you. It hurts. The pain, the answer to our pain is in the pain. We have to step in. So food no longer becomes our medication or the the, the temporary savior that cannot save. Mm. Now your ministry, how long ago did you start this? 2000 and well, we started, we became an official nonprofit in 2011, but I've been doing it probably seed work for it since 2006. Okay. Talk to me about the journey that you've been through with this, with your husband. Mm. With ministry? Mm -hmm. Well, (laughs) this is a whole nother show, Jamie. Um, My husband and I got married and I was a believer nominally but didn't really know, didn't, like I said, Jesus in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a believer at the, he was just agnostic, kind of like, Hey, if it works for you, Mm -hmm. then I became a believer because I was a wreck. Mm -hmm. I was, I should have been divorced in year one. I was making him my savior. Mm -hmm. Everyone needed to save me. And if you didn't save me, you're the problem, right? Like that idol. Yeah. Oh yeah. It'll destroy you. Yeah. Totally. And so, uh, we almost got divorced at year one and I'm, I had the pull to go to church. I started to go to church. I hear the gospel. I start coming alive. He starts seeing me come alive. I never expected him to come to church. He starts coming to church. He gets saved. And it was right about then that I knew I was called to ministry. I remember him asking me, you're not going to be a Jesus freak, right? (laughs) That's in the book too. Right? (laughs) You're going to be a Jesus freak, right? And I'm like, of course not. Heck no. Yeah. I'm good. Oh my gosh. And shortly after he became a believer, he turned back and became an atheist it was a slow turn, but then it was a hard when he went atheist, he went atheist. And it was during the years that I was responding to this mm-hmm. call that as I grew deep into kind of treasure hunting for the Lord and what he was doing, he grew darker. He was running. Yeah, yeah, really running, literally, figuratively, literally, he was doing Ironmans. I mean, just running away from the Lord and our marriage got really, really dark. Um, so the ministry, gosh, it was birthed in such, it's hard, you know, when someday you look back, you go, I don't feel like that woman anymore because of what the Lord has done. But I can, I don't remember my pain, but I also can be like, wow, we were miserable. Mm. Like we should have been blown up for sure. The enemy had us in the crosshairs, but God. Mm. Did you ever... I would imagine in the middle of that, you would think maybe this isn't the right time for this. Oh gosh, many times. And I had friends that were telling me to turn back. I lost, uh, I lost, I lost everything to follow this in many, many ways. I mean, the people that were my friends kind of were like, what are you doing? You know, I, the few, I have a few faith friends to this day that could tell the story of that journey for me. But even some of them have turned away from the Lord themselves. Like, it's just been interesting. Mm. It's literally been a very lonely walk. So you're developing your ministry. Mm-hmm. You're falling more in love with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And your husband is not. Mm-mm. No. I always, I'm so grateful for a husband yes. who loves the Lord. Amen. And I always wonder, what are those dinner conversations like? What, I mean. When your husband doesn't love the yeah, Lord. And you are like, can't get enough of him. Here's what they sound like. It's lonely. Mm. It's very, very, very sad. Um, it's hard. And, and honestly, I would say my husband and I have been married 20 years now. Yay. 20 years. Um, but, and it's just probably within the last, and by the way, um, spoiler alert, yeah. my husband came back to mm-hmm. the Lord after 10 years. Mm. Um but it was after he came back to the Lord because he saw how, I mean, I know I was a witness. So anyone who's out there who does not have a believing husband, the Bible is true. They will be saved through you. They see your story, whether or not, you know, the Lord reconciles your marriage or what it looks like, but salvation is yours. Like God is covering it. My marriage was saved. Um, My husband, watched quietly and saw me get more and more weird. I think for him, he would say it felt like I was having an affair with someone Mm. else, you know, because we didn't enter in, in that way. That's why young women listening, please, please do not negotiate this one away. Mm -hmm. This, this goes back to the healthy church moving forward. The church is going to be the beautiful bride. Like stay faithful to the one who's faithful to you and find the one who's faithful to, mm-hmm. to God. Otherwise it is a whip <laughs> marriage mm-hmm. without that, that, that symbiotic energy is a whip. But, um, he eventually 
just, I think, embraced the, okay, I'm about to get weird too. And he actually did get really weird. He, um, when he came back to the Lord, he kind of went after what is he really made for? What's his design? Um, so he um, is actually a CEO by day. And at night, he's a volunteer police officer. Are you serious? That's really his design. Wow. Yeah, that's really what he was made for. He's actually, if it was up to him and if he was raised in a, probably a godly home that helps deer, he'd be in the military somewhere. Mm -hmm. He's not a CEO. I mean, he he's a great CEO, great mm -hmm. job. And he does it now. He wants to pay for the kids. Get yeah. the, he, That's yeah. too much in his brain. He's yeah. like, I got to take care of them. But by night, he wants to put on the Batman suit and go mm -hmm. punch crime in the face. Mm -hmm. That's so, he got weird. So God sustained your marriage yeah. um, by the grace of God. Yeah. Because that was really, really hard, I'm sure. And so how long ago was that? Well, he turned it around, I would say about um, six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a slow, uh -huh. yeah. it wasn't like six years ago, Simon was For like, sure. I love Jesus. Uh -huh. No, it was, I mean, we had a big fallout. Mm -hmm. We had a big crash and then the Lord showed up and it was okay. Um, a repent and a kind of a humbling of his heart mm -hmm. to say, kind of going, what am I complaining about? You're a good woman <laughs> doing good things. And he just kind of relaxed and kind of got behind me quietly. Now he's uh, the treasurer of my board, helps with my finances. I mean, he helps as much as he can. I'm still the most gospel person. <laughs> like I'm the, I'm the preacher for yeah. sure of the yeah. house, yeah. but he's, he's just the quiet rock. He's my rock. And that's mm -hmm. what his name means. It's Simon, Simon Peter Rock. I love it. And y'all have two kids, mm -hmm. teenagers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have a 16 year old son, Jack, and a 14 year old daughter, Sophia. Teenagers raising kids is probably the thing in my life where I'm just like, God, I need you more than any other thing I ever do. Absolutely. This has been the year for me of talking about idolatry. Like I've had to confess where I want to control them, mm. where I want them to make the decisions I want them to make. Cause I don't, it comes from a good place. Yeah, I don't want sure. them to hurt. Like I've hurt. Sure. I know more. We know more. Their frontal lobes, uh -huh. their lids are not completely on yet. Yeah. They still think they know everything. And I'm like, Lord, I'm going to love them. I'm just going to love them really well. And I have to trust you. Mm. I've just got to let control go. Control yeah. down, love up. Those are my two. Like, a, like I just again. see control down, love up. Oh. I see them as knobs. I I'm just, like a control freak and I'm always having. <laughs> Turn it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aaron's usually nudging me like, hey, let it go. I know. Let Simon it go. does that to me too. Here's an example. And Aaron got on to me, not got on to me, but you know what I mean? Like, we had a conversation later and he's like, you should just let that go. So we're all mm -hmm. having dinner and my in-laws are there. And I think this came from a place of wanting my in-laws to maybe think that my kids have really good manners. <laughs> I don't, you know what <laughs> okay, I mean? Good, good okay. confession. See, I'm confessing, right? <laughs> well, I was getting on, I thought no one else could see me, but apparently Aaron saw the whole thing. I was getting onto one of my kids and I was like, he's like taking up the whole table, you know, mm -hmm. with his elbows. elbows. And on a regular night, I might not have said anything, but I think I, I had this like, I wanted to be in control and I wanted to make everything look good. And we, 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 and so I kept like giving him like signals across the table. And like a day later, Aaron was like, you know, I think you could have just let that go. And I was like, oh, I okay. Know. So what do you do after that? Well, this is the first time I thought about it actually, since it happened, mm -hmm. what I think I need to do and what I have done plenty of times before is probably go apologize yeah. to my kid. Well, it goes back to this. I know for my son that it can feed to shame. Like for them, for them. Yes. Yeah. Like something's wrong with me. I'm not doing it right again. I, you know, and that little weasels open all the time in their brains, just waiting for you to feed it. Mm. And so if any time I do feed it and then I get the conviction, go back, go clean that up because I do not want to give Satan a foothold mm. in my son's life. But yeah, that asking for forgiveness is something in, in the whole wellness world of what I, even I do is just getting that forgiveness, giving forgiveness, being quick and moving forward. Asking, because it will create something in your absolutely. heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Bitterness. Mm -hmm. I was reading uh, a couple of days ago. So that fight or flight thing that we talked about, mm -hmm. animals have this. They show that when like do two dogs get in a dog fight, that's a fight or flight. So they go. But mm -hmm. then when animals are done with the fight, they are known to then shake very like tremor kind uh -huh. of violently in uh -huh. a way. And it's not a bad thing. It's actually their body releasing or, oh. their body, releasing the hormones, the chemical, uh -huh. the whole experience uh -huh. so that it's as if it never happened. So we don't have that ability as humans. We just, that fight, flight, mm -hmm. whatever it is, somebody said something mm -hmm. that hurt me. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do next? Lockdown or get big. 
just gets stored in our bodies. That's why our bodies are holding on to so much of our trauma, mm-hmm. our hurt, our wounds. Even if you think you've done, right? Just when you think you're like, oh, I haven't we had live that. in a sinful world. Right. We are going to get hurt and All be hurters. Time. Yeah. That's why the, the expression of exercise and movement, it is as if it gives the body, especially when you're giving your mind attention to what's hurting me today or mm. what, what am I holding on to today? Did my son say something bad? Was I a bad mom last night? Whatever it was, you're still holding that in some way. But if you can move that into the expression of going for a walk or whatever it is, it's the bot and you're intentional about that thing, then you can, un- it's an unwinding instead of holding lockdown, yeah. more control, more judgment, uh-huh. right? Instead of, okay, God, come on in and move this through me. That is so interesting. That fun? Yeah, I'm convinced because I'm always asking the Lord, I know you have a bigger story for this fitness thing. Like, what, what are we doing with this? Mm-hmm. I know it's this kind of neurological, physiological, um, quantum physics thing mm-hmm. too that we go, the body holds the story. It is holding the story. And unless we're queued up to, okay, what am I thinking? What am I feeling in my chest? You know, I even get people to, to take a minute in silence or quiet be like, I have a headache or what is it? What am I feeling? What do I need? Mm. What am I feeling? What do I need? And we just don't do it enough. We just kind of keep scary. Going. Right. Even as you're talk- talking right now, I can feel like that's a scary thing to mm-hmm. stop mm-hmm. and acknowledge mm-hmm. pain, mm-hmm. hurt, mm. fear. Be still and know though. Mm-hmm. Otherwise it just goes back to, are we giving God lip service or are we mm-hmm. giving him our heart? Like what, I want him to have my heart. Yeah. So wherever I'm stuck, wherever mm-hmm. I'm, anxious or unforgiving or bitter bitterness. I think bitterness. And therefore, I think it's another one too. I think, I think a lot of people in the church are for lack of, they're, they're just mad at God. Mm-hmm. They're mad. Things haven't worked out. Yeah. He didn't save their mm-hmm. son. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. And I just feel like the Lord is so big to say, let's rumble, mm-hmm. let's go take me by. And I've done that with the Lord in the darkest days of my marriage. I mean, I grabbed him by the lapels mm-hmm. and shook him and told him how disappointed I yeah. was. And because, you know, you're thinking, like you said, you'd think your life would be going better mm-hmm. as ministry's growing and it was going down fast. Mm-hmm. But I stayed before the Lord. Like David would just keep his yeah. eyes before and just, okay, we're going to wrestle. Mm-hmm. And then you tell me what needs to be done, who I need to forgive, mm-hmm. how I can believe another day because yeah. save me. And God has moved in your life so much through that story mm-hmm. that you get to share that. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in moments like today, Mm -hmm. you know, there's somebody listening who is feeling this same thing that you're describing. Oh gosh, he's faithful. Yeah, he is faithful, but feel it, feel Mm -hmm. it. I think that's the step to becoming um, that healing to process to work is first non-judgment. Don't, we said we don't, our feelings scare us. Mm -hmm. Like, so we kind of go, no, that's scary. No, that's, you know, we, we label everything. So remove the judgment of whatever you're feeling and then feel it, Mm -hmm. have the permission to feel it, to grieve it. Like I said, with my, my chest, I had to grieve. And at the same time, joy and suffering sit on the same side of the field and cheer the team on together. And so there was suffering and sadness, but there's joy. You get to feel Mm -hmm. all that. And then release, which is surrender, forgiveness, letting go of the person who violated you or you violate just that, that, that exchange of grace. And then time, everything takes time. Mm -hmm. Everything takes time. So don't be like, I have to have it today. Yeah. I remember the first time I sat in a counselor's office um, and it was so painful to sit in the feelings and talk about them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just, I felt... I described those first months of counseling as in I would leave and I would feel like I had just been beat up Mm -hmm. Um, because it's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to say Mm -hmm. things out loud. It's hard to acknowledge feelings. Mm -hmm. But God did so much in healing parts of me that had been hurt through just talking about it, you know, and so I'm just I'm with you. Absolutely. That's why community. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know. Thank goodness for therapy. So people can afford it. Go get it for sure. But if you can't afford it, find a trusted Mm -hmm. friend and just. And trusted friend, just listen. Yeah. You don't have to say anything. Yeah. They just have to have a place to. Yeah, a safe place. Mm-hmm. Unload. Well, I am a huge fan of what you're doing. Huge I'm fan. Huge fan of yours, And, Jamie. you know, this happens a handful of times on the show where I feel like it turns into like a little counseling session for me. 
And what you don't know is I had not that story that I just told you about my son happened, you know, probably six or seven days ago. Yeah. And my husband, and I talked about it five or six days ago and yeah. I hadn't thought about it until this moment. Yeah. Uh, but I will apologize to my son uh, today. It's going to be good. You know what you're going to do? You're going to serve him the gospel. I am. And it gets me teary. And I, I actually do not have a problem doing it. I am thankful that I can go to him and do Amen. that. So look, I'm going to cry. But, I love it. Um, okay. I end every show asking people three things are loving okay. and what you're reading. Okay. You can pick. Um, well, if I had to say one book, the body keeps the score. So the body the keeps bo- the score. If in terms of like a resource, okay. it's pretty heady. Uh-huh. But if this fascinates you about trauma and healing and how the body's related to it, the body keeps the score. I think someone has told me about this book. Yeah, get it. There, there'll be some chapters that you'll be like, yeah, can't whatever. do it. But yeah. yeah, but keep keep going for it. I can reopen that book all the time. Okay, three things I love. One, I love my my new Apple Watch. I have been noticing it, I you, must say. You notice, what do you mean? My watch or the <laughs> fact that it's new Apple Watch? The fact that it's your watch, because oh. it's gold. Oh, it's, this is from Amazon, like 20 bucks. Okay, but still, it's like, <laughs> it's it's pretty. It's pretty. Yes, it is pretty. That's yeah, you just I mean. get bands on Amazon. Yeah. That's what I do. Do you love having it? uh, The thing I do love about it is that the new one will take, I can text from it. I can play music from it. I can do, I don't have to have my phone on Uh me when I go for Uh a run. Okay. Yeah. That's what I've heard people. So I like that. Yeah. Um, But I don't like all the notifications. I turn them all off. I do not need to tap, tap, Voxer, tap, tap, I turn Instagram, notifications tap, off tap. my phone. Like I don't need that. Oh yeah. I, right. Exactly. But you have to set your, this yeah. not to, yeah. to coordinate, but I, what I really use it the most for. So music, listening to podcasts so I can walk around my house okay. and I can uh-huh. go back or forward. Yeah. Um, and then I can set timers for when the laundry's done. See, there you go. So that laundry yes. beast, that the thing just sits there. The laundry there. that always haunts us. So now us. it'll just zit and yes. make it keep zapping me until so I So you go don't have laundry. spoiled clothes in the washing uh, machine. God. I rewash so many clothes. Uh, okay, your Apple Watch. What um, else? I'm loving my scarves because we're so cold in Phoenix right now uh-huh. for us. Anything uh-huh. under yes. 60, we are freezing. Yeah. Uh, and then, oh my gosh. Okay, I've said this on so many shows, but I still love is kombucha. Do you make your own? No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know. Do you like kombucha? Well, I will buy it at the grocery store mm. and I like it. You not, need to love it. <laughs> it's just not like ever on a grocery list or in my brain. Oh my gosh. It is. Okay. Until I see it. But it's so, super good for you. It is really good for your stomach. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I've, um, the whole gut series, gut health. There's a pot. We've done a podcast on that, a series podcast on that. And I had my own gut healing that I needed to do. Kombucha was a big help. Really? Mm-hmm. Huge help. Okay. And it's just good taste. Like I don't drink coffee. Mm-hmm. I know. That's can okay. I, can I still be your friend? Yes, totally. All my friends drink coffee. So Everyone. Coffee to me, I love coffee, but I'm not a coffee snob. I mean, if I'm in a holiday and express, good girl. Aaron, Aaron's going to go out and get Keeping coffee. I'm going to eat the coffee. I'm going to drink the coffee that's in the hotel room. <laughs> um, okay. Alisa, thanks for joining me on the happy hour. Jamie, thank you. I'm so excited, blessed, honored to be here. Okay, I told you it was good, you guys. I told you it was good. I know you were taking notes and you loved everything that Elisa brought to the table. Her honesty and her vulnerability, they were so welcoming to me and I know that you felt that as well. If you want to find out more about her story with her breast implants, go to her blog because she tells the whole story all about it. Also, just in case you're wondering after listening, I did apologize to my son and it was a great moment for both of us. And I honestly, I do drink more water than I did the day she asked me in this show. I hope this show was an encouragement to you. If so, I'd love to hear about it. Find me on social media and let me know what you loved. Today's show was edited by Chris with Podshaper and the music was developed for the show by Matt Graham. Next week, my guest is Kristen Kill, who released a book just yesterday called Selah. Guys, enjoy your week. Share the show with a girlfriend. Have a happy hour with a friend and I hope I get to see you on the road this spring. 